Today is the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. And the Church invites us today to place our trust in God, and particularly in his only Son, Jesus Christ. Through his resurrection, Christ has conquered death and strengthened our faith and our hope for eternal life. Today's Gospel begins with a blessing for those who are already doing God's will. The Beatitude is a great song which calls us to the life of virtue, reflection and total surrender to God's will. It is Christ's song which calls us to trust firmly in God while looking forward to eternity. These blessings are for those who are totally unwilling, ready to place everything into God's hands. The good news for us today is simple. Nothing in this world can rob us of our peace, the peace of mind, our interior joy, because our trust is not in this world, nor in man. Rather, our trust is in the crucified Christ and his resurrection, the saviour and hope of the world. The psalmist summarised this good news for us, happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. As consumers, we think about buying more or better or new. If one has the means, one can buy his or way into a state of satisfaction, even happiness, however short-lived. Our consumption patterns can redress our defects and doubts about our self-esteem and public image. Am I physically attractive? Do people look up to me and respect me? Do people perceive me as strong and confident? We rely on the material things of the world as if that is all there is to, to retain. Will the Lord condemn people who have money and food? Are those people who laugh and those who, are those people who laugh and those who we speak well of are they condemned too? Conversely, we hear about the blessings for all who are poor, all who do not have food, those who mourn and those who are disparaged for the sake and the name of Jesus. The pressing question is where and in whom do we place our trust? God is all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful, as well as our loving Creator and Father. Therefore, it is most fitting to put our complete trust in Him. No other person or thing deserves the trust that we place in God. Paul cries out to the wayward Corinthians, If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. Christ is not the means for us to get what we want. Christians desire Christ and Christ will provide. The Apostle Luke warns in the Gospel that those who enjoy an excess in earthly pleasures may experience a temporary or a fleeting joy only to ultimately find life empty and without any meaning. The temptation, and it is a temptation for us all, is to get what we need and forget about others. There is an inner attitude that is in the Gospel. There is a tendency to think about self-preservation rather than self-sacrifice. Quite often it is in the generosity of the poor that shames the rich. We need only to recall the story of the widow and the two mites. It is when we begin to hope for eternal life that we can embrace the idea of giving to others and helping others. It is in hope that we can it is in hope that we can see others might have food. It is in faith that we can cry when we see the misery of our sisters and brothers and subsequently, hopefully with immediacy, find the compassion and mercy to be able to help them. How happy are you who are poor? Yours is the kingdom of God. The Beatitudes identify those whose God has special concern for. They are the hungry, the sorrowful, the persecuted. Jesus echoes a world that is turned upside down, so much that Mary sings in the Magnificat, the lowly are raised, the mighty are cast down, the hungry are filled, and the rich go away empty-handed. These are the people that God notices and blesses. Jesus teaches us that happiness does not reside in possessions, successes or achievements. Real happiness resides in an open heart to be loving, giving, caring, to be enhancing the lives of others 
even to the point of dying for those we love. Jesus invites us to find this kind of happiness through a life of witness, service and solidarity. May we follow the example of Jesus in seeing our brothers and sisters through the prism of wounded humanity, which is healed and raised up by God's radical outreach. Peace be with you.